Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about the management of a myocardial bridge. Our patient is a 60-year-old woman with hypertension and hyperlipidemia. Over the past uh, couple of months, uh, she presented to the ER three times for chest pain, uh, usually related to emotional stress or anxiety. ECG and cardiac enzymes have always been normal, and she was advised to follow up with a cardiologist. Uh, her cardiologist did schedule a stress test, uh, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, she is now back in the ER again, uh, her fourth time uh, with chest pain. Uh, ECG was uh, completely benign, uh, troponin was normal, uh, echo was unremarkable, uh, but because of her multiple ER visits, uh, she was referred for coronary angiography. On diagnostic angiogram, um, the RCA has a minor proximal plaque. The left circumflex has mild irregularities. The uh, LED has no significant plaque, but there is a long and very prominent uh, myocardial bridge uh, in the mid LED. So what is a myocardial bridge? Well, uh, the major coronary arteries normally lie on the surface of the heart, uh, hence they are uh, sometimes called epicardial uh, coronary arteries. But sometimes part of the coronary artery may dip into the muscle of the heart, and the part of the myocardium overlying uh, this coronary artery is called a myocardial bridge. Um, some degree of myocardial bridging is actually fairly common, and on average, it is thought that uh, as many as one quarter of adults uh, have some bridging. And uh, majority of those, 70% uh, of bridges uh, affect the LED. Uh, most bridges are quite mild and uh, very, very thin. Uh, thicker bridges or very thick bridges uh, exacerbated by uh, myocardial hypertrophy uh, can uh, potentially cause symptoms. Now, bridges squeeze during systole and most coronary perfusion occurs during diastole. So it is actually not completely obvious why bridges should even be causing a problem. And indeed, in the vast, vast majority of cases, uh, bridges uh, do not cause any symptoms. So how and why do bridges become problematic? Um, the answer is not always clear, uh, but several factors uh, may be at play. Um, in more severe bridges, uh, coronary narrowing can actually persist uh, into uh, 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 diastole. And so as patients age and develop more small vessel CAD, uh, gradual loss in coronary perfusion time during diastole uh, can start causing symptoms. Uh, tachycardia uh, can similarly cause symptoms by shortening the duration of uh, diastole. And while it is uh, relatively rare um, to see CAD within the bridge itself, um, CAD quite commonly develops just proximal to the bridge uh, where there is greater disturbance to blood flow and can uh, cause symptoms with time. Finally, uh, a milking effect um, some, from severe bridges can sometimes uh, result in retrograde flow, backward flow, uh, during systole. And that can cause a coronary steel phenomenon uh, from downstream coronary branches uh, that can become uh, more and more prominent as the downstream branches get stiffer uh, with age. Um, management of myocardial bridges is uh, conservative. Um, for uh, asymptomatic cases, uh, we almost always advise uh, just routine uh, cardiovascular risk factor modification and the usual treatments for any CAD that arises. Um, for symptomatic cases, the mainstay of treatment is beta blockers and, ch um, and uh, calcium channel blockers, and sometimes fairly high doses are uh, required. Um, Ivabradine um, can also be used in patients for whom blood pressure uh, limits higher dosage of uh, beta blockers. Now, importantly, nitrates uh, accentuate uh, the effects of the bridge and can exacerbate symptoms. So nitrates uh, should uh, therefore be um, avoided. Uh, Antiplatelet therapy uh, is not an absolute for uh, bridges per se, uh, but can be considered um, if there is a concurrent CAD. And, and obviously, if the patient has any known trigger uh, for uh, symptoms, uh, now these uh, should be avoided. So uh, our patient was uh, started on metoprolol, uh, which was uh, gradually up-titrated to 150 milligrams a day. 
Um, unfortunately, uh, two months later, um, she had another episode of more severe chest pain and returned to the ER. Uh, she was having an argument with her husband. And this time, uh, the troponin became weakly positive at the 0 0.31 uh, nanograms per mil. The upper limit of normal at the center was uh, 0 0.29. Um, so she was uh, referred uh, for relook uh, angiography. So on uh, relook, uh, her coronaries are uh, essentially unchanged. Uh, again, we see uh, the uh, long myocardial bridge um, uh, with near obliteration of the lumen of the LED uh, during uh, systole. So uh, what are our options now? Uh, this patient is already on fairly aggressive medical therapy. Um, is there an invasive option? Uh, can you uh, stent a bridge? Well, um, unfortunately, uh, this is still a fairly uh, data-free zone. Um, there really is not a lot of clinical data uh, for PCI of a myocardial bridge. Um, there is uh, some experience for a related problem, uh, which is this paper. Uh, in uh, 2014, uh, Lee and uh, his uh, colleagues uh, published a study uh, looking at what happens when you perform PCI in a vessel with a bridge, uh, not uh, in the bridge itself. Um, this is actually fairly common, and this uh, most commonly happens uh, when you are placing a stent uh, uh, just upstream uh, uh, from the bridge. They uh, looked at over 500 patients, and what they found was that PCI in patients with a bridge uh, has significantly more MACE and ischemia-driven target vessel revascularization uh, compared to PCI uh, in patients uh, without a bridge. Um, this is uh, not uh, particularly surprising, uh, considering the flow disturbances within the stented segment that can be caused by the bridge. Uh, but in the clinical scenarios where you find yourself uh, obligated or forced to stent proximal to a bridge, this is something um, uh, that uh, uh, you need to keep in mind. But what about stenting within the bridge itself? Uh, now, data here is even more limited. Um, one of the larger case series uh, was published uh, here in uh, 2008, uh, where patients uh, who had actually failed medical therapy uh, were treated with either uh, PCI with DES or with uh, continued uh, medical therapy. And um, their results uh, really do not support PCI. Uh, PCI for myocardial bridging in this study did not relieve angina uh, compared to continued medical therapy. And in fact, the medical therapy arm actually did somewhat better. Uh, there was also a very high rate of uh, restenosis and a 42% uh, rate of uh, target vessel uh, revascularization. So obviously a very, very small study, uh, but the authors did conclude uh, that PCI for medically refractory symptomatic uh, myocardial bridge uh, uh, should be uh, avoided. Uh, so, so again, there is a very limited data for PCI for myocardial bridge, and what is available um, isn't uh, particularly uh, encouraging. Uh, there is a questionable efficacy for angina relief, and um, there are also case reports and case series of a higher risk of uh, uh, vessel perforation, up to 6.3% in one, um, one study, um, study suggesting very high rate of uh, instant restenosis, uh, high risk of very late uh, stent thrombosis, as well as a higher risk of uh, stent fracture. Uh, surgery uh, is another option that is considered for uh, medically refractory symptomatic uh, myocardial bridges. Um, now, in general, for short, uh, shallow bridges, uh, myotomy uh, is uh, often performed. Uh, for the long, uh, deep bridges, uh, cabbage uh, is uh, uh, often uh, favored. And, and just like PCI, uh, there isn't a lot of data, uh, but there are case series and reports that suggest that surgery can provide symptomatic relief and is uh, relatively safe. Take-home messages. Uh, medical therapy uh, is the mainstay uh, of treatment for symptomatic myocardial bridging. Uh, beta blockers are uh, considered first line, and uh, calcium channel blockers often used as well. Um, Ivabradine uh, can be considered. 
uh, nitrates uh, should be stopped uh, as uh, they can exacerbate symptoms. Uh, the efficacy of PCI is questionable, uh, but data is extremely limited. Uh, can you do it? Well, well, of course you can do it, but the better question is, uh, should you do it? And the jury, uh, in, my case, in my mind, is still out, uh, but uh, the limited data that is available thus far uh, is not uh, particularly encouraging. Um, for patients uh, with truly uh, medically refractory symptoms, surgery, uh, either a myotomy or cabbage, uh, can be considered. So what happened to our patient? Well, uh, she ended up being referred to a cardiac surgeon for an evaluation, uh, but after some discussion, uh, she actually decided to uh, continue uh, medical therapy. Um, thank you for watching.